Yeah, so these um, happiness workshops that I run, a core of most of them is the three happiness paradoxes. And the first of these paradoxes is helping others help yourself. Now, the Dalai Lama has been recorded on many occasions saying, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. And this is a real kind of core fundament of Buddhist philosophy and practice. Helping others helps yourself. But, interestingly, we now have medical scientific evidence to back up this claim. It is literally true that helping others helps yourself at a physical level. How does this work? So, you know when you do something kind for someone, um, you engage in that of kindness or compassion, you get that feeling, that kind of warm, fuzzy feeling. You know, it's literally like a physical feeling, right? That feeling is caused by the release into the bloodstream of a certain chemical. That chemical is called oxytocin. Now, you might have heard of oxytocin before. Um, in the press, it's referred to as the love chemical. You know, it's a certain chemical associated with feelings of um, empathy, trust, love, compassion. And when it's released into the bloodstream, you don't just get that um, warm, fuzzy feeling. There's actually things that happen to your body as well. When oxytocin is released into your body, you are protecting yourself against heart disease, high blood pressure, and the effect of free radicals on the body. So every time you engage in an act of kindness, and oxytocin is released into the bloodstream, you are protecting yourself at a physical level. Scientific proof that helping others helps yourself. Now, if you want to look a bit deeper into the science, it gets really interesting. There's a certain nerve in the body called the vagus nerve. Now, the vagus nerve is the primary cranial nerve, which links the brain stem, meandering through the body, through every major organ in the body. So it links the brain stem with the body. Now, the primary role of the vagus nerve is to protect against internal inflammation. So we know what external inflammation is. You know, you hit yourself, your arm becomes inflamed, whatever. Um, but internal inflammation is a symptom of some of the biggest killers. Cancer, uh, heart disease, uh, even Alzheimer's. Internal inflammation is one of the symptoms. So the vagus nerve, its job is to protect against internal inflammation. What is the easiest way to protect the health vitality and vigor of the vagus nerve, oxytocin. The vagus nerve has actually even been referred to as the oxytocin super, uh, oxytocin super highway because every time oxytocin is released, it maintains the health of the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is the very core of your being. Every time you engage kindness, you release oxytocin. Every time you release oxytocin, you protect the vagus nerve, the most important primary cranial nerve in the body. Scientific proof that helping others helped yourself. The Dalai Lama was right. We knew it all along, now we have the science to back him up. So the second of the happiness paradoxes is thinking about death is good for you. The paradox being that by meditating upon death, we become more conscious of life. Now this is a weird one. Um, but what I'm saying is, we need to think about death more. There is no better way to shake yourself up and to wake yourself up than by thinking about death, than by contemplating your own mortality. Now it's weird because in the West we have this thing about, you know, morbidity. You start talking about death like I'm talking about death, now you don't get invited back to the dinner party. You know, people don't want to talk about this stuff. And it's weird because it's the only shared commonality of human experience. You know, the only thing I can say about you and me for sure is that we will both die one day. We'll both be successful at that. We can be failures throughout our lives, we will be successful at dying. 100%. And yet, we never talk about it. And we definitely don't plan for it. Think of the amount of time we spend planning for holidays or planning for parties or what we're going to wear or what we're going to have for dinner. And half of the time, these plans never come to fruition. And yet, there's one thing that we know for certain will most definitely happen to us. We will die. And yet, it's the one thing that most of us do not think about, do not talk about, and do not plan for. You know, I'm young. I'm like... 20, well, I'm not that young, 28. Um, but I've had a few friends who haven't made it this far. None of them thought they'd die in their 20s. Everyone had big plans for the future. None of them spent time contemplating their own death. But when you experience the death of a loved one close to you, and I'm sure we've all experienced this, it does shake you up, it does wake you up. But what I'm saying is we need not wait for that. We need not wait for these moments. We can engage this now 
by contemplating our own mortality. And when we do, what I found is that two things come up. Number one is we come into contact with our potentiality. This huge potential that we have to make some difference to the human story, to leave something of worth, to do something of benefit in this short, short time we have. And the other, talking of short time, is our limitations. You know, we're here for like 100 years max, you know, approximately. Uh, first kind of few years of that, we're a kid. Last few years of that, we're an invalid, possibly. There's not actually a lot of time we've got to make a difference. So by thinking about death, it's not about being, oh, morbid, oh, God, we're going to die, or oh, what a disaster. Not at all. If we think about death, we wake up. And we say, yes, now is the time to make a difference. Now is the time to say the things I want to be said, to do the things that I want to do and help the people that need to be helped. Thinking about death is good for you. Thinking about death takes the reins back, takes the, takes the controls back off the autopilot. Because for most of us, we are sleepwalking through life. Death helps wake us up. So we don't have to be sleepwalking anymore, sleepwalking towards our graves. We can be awake and aware in the knowledge of our own mortality. And it's a weird one. Definitely seems like a paradox, but I've seen that it helps. So the third um, happiness paradox is that happiness is a habit. Now my teacher Rob Nairn has often said, happiness is not a temporary condition, it is a state of mind. And so it is our mind that we must work with if we are to engage long-term happiness. You know, the mind is our filter of experience. All of our experience comes through the filter of the mind. So it's the mind we need to work with. And I believe that there are two specific habits or attitudes of mind, which if we can enhance them, if we can get into a habit of them being our default settings, our mental default settings, we can really engage long-lasting happiness. And these are acceptance and friendliness. Now when I use the term acceptance, I'm using it to mean unconditional love. Unconditional love towards yourself and others, towards all situations. Acceptance does not mean that you condone negative mind states or negative situations in your life. A lot of people think it does. They go, oh no, I can't accept it, I simply can't. You know, in fact, until we accept the situation, we can't work through it. Acceptance isn't passive. Acceptance doesn't mean you're a doormat. Acceptance is a prerequisite to actively engaging a situation and working through it. We must accept every part of ourselves if we're to be truly happy. Acceptance lies at the core of it all. And in fact, acceptance lies at another seemingly paradoxical statement, which forms a core of, of some of my workshops, which is that it's all right to be unhappy. Unhappiness is not a defect. One of the main things we need to know if we're to be happy is that sometimes we can be happy to be unhappy. Not all the time, but there are times when we feel sorrow in our lives, when we feel melancholy, when we feel down, and that's okay. You know, we cannot avoid pain, but at least we can become friendly towards it. Now, 90% of our pain is caused by our aversion to pain. Only 10% is the pain itself. I heard a Buddhist teacher teach on that once, and it's very true. It's all about acceptance. And the second mental habit we can get into to lead to long-term happiness is friendliness. Unconditional friendliness towards ourselves and towards others. Towards good situations, towards bad situations. Unconditional friendliness. I once heard a teacher say that actually the entire spiritual path would be summed up by that term. Unconditional friendliness. So that's so, so important. If we can get into those habits of mind, acceptance and friendliness, we're well onto the way for long-term happiness. So they're the three paradoxes.